Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. In this video, we're going to be looking at security controls. So at its core, cybersecurity and security in general, for that matter, is really just a bunch of controls that have been put in place to protect us from harm. And by implementing, assessing and adjusting these security controls, we can help protect ourselves and our businesses from cyber attacks. So let's dive in. The controls we put in place are split into four main categories. These are technical controls, managerial controls, operational controls, and physical controls. First, technical controls. Now, technical controls involve the use of technology to reduce the risk and to detect and prevent threats. Examples of technical controls are things like firewalls that filter the incoming and outgoing traffic and blocks unauthorized access. We could have intrusion detection systems that monitor the network's traffic for suspicious activity and then alerts us when potential threats are detected. Encryption. Encrypting data means that even if it was intercepted or stolen, it can't be read. Endpoint protection software. This can detect and remove malicious software and other malicious activity. And we'll be covering all of this later on in this course. Next, let's take a look at managerial controls. Now, managerial controls are policies and procedures put in place by an organization's management team to manage and mitigate risks. These types of controls include security policies. These are official documents that outline the organization's security policies that employees must follow. Onboarding policies, ensuring all employees follow an onboarding process. This process could include things like security awareness training and best practices. Incident response plans. These are the steps to take in the event of a cyber security incident. Now, operational controls involve more of the day-to-day -day activities that are carried out by people rather than automated systems. Examples of this include things like incident reporting and understanding and following the procedures of reporting and responding to security incidents or suspicious activity. It could be access reviews, so regularly reviewing who has access and to what resource to ensure that permissions are up to date and still appropriate. Security awareness training. So conducting regular training sessions for employees to educate them on the security best practices and how to spot potentially malicious threats. Physical controls are security measures implemented in physical locations to stop any sort of unauthorized access to restricted areas or sensitive systems. Now, when talking about physical controls, you need to think about everything you can touch. For example, locks and access control systems are regularly used to restrict access into buildings and other sensitive areas, things like server rooms. Security cameras to monitor activity and detect unauthorized access. And we may have things like fences and security guards to physically protect those areas and prevent unauthorized access. Okay, so now we've looked at the high level control categories. Let's look at the different control types. There are six different control types. These are preventative, deterrent, detective, corrective, compensating, and directive controls. Let's start with the preventative controls. Now, preventative controls are designed to stop or prevent security incidents before they happen. Let me give you some examples of preventative controls for each of our categories. Technical preventative controls are things like firewalls and endpoint protection software. These tools prevent threats by blocking malicious activity. A managerial preventative control could be developing a strict password policy. This helps to prevent password related attacks. An operational preventative control could be something like delivering security awareness training programs to teach our users to spot malicious threats and phishing emails. And for physical controls, preventative measures can be things like locks and access control systems to prevent unauthorized access into, say, the office building. Next, we have deterrent controls. Now, deterrent controls are designed to discourage potential attackers from attempting any type of malicious activity. For example, a technical deterrent could be a warning message when a user attempts to transfer a file. This message will tell the user that that transfer will be logged and reviewed by the security team. Now, after reading that message, that individual may decide not to continue with that transfer. A managerial deterrent might be the implementation of some security policy that outlines the severe consequences of any kind of violation. And an operational deterrent example could be requiring all employees to wear a visible identification badge at all times while on the premises with security staff conducting regular checks. 
This may stop attackers from attempting just walking into the building because they know that they will be asked for their badge. For physical deterrence, we can put up signage that tells potential attackers that this site is closely monitored by surveillance cameras and security guards. Maybe even throw in some guard dogs for good measure. So if an attacker sees our deterrent controls but decides to continue with their attack anyway, we then have our detective controls in place designed to spot or detect the malicious activity. For technical detective controls, things like intrusion detection systems that monitor network traffic for suspicious activity could be used. For managerial detective controls, it could be the implementation of an instant reporting procedure that employees must follow if they spot something suspicious. This would include things like who to report to, how to document the incident and what information to include. Operational detective controls could be the use of security guards to carry out regular patrols of the site to monitor for things like unauthorized access or suspicious behavior. And for physical detective controls, a company may install security cameras and surveillance systems to monitor and detect suspicious behavior in and around the property. Corrective controls are used to respond to and fix security incidents or vulnerabilities after they have been detected. So an example of a technical corrective control is to patch vulnerabilities found in an operating system or an application. By doing this, organizations can mitigate known vulnerabilities that could be exploited by attackers. From a managerial perspective, corrective controls could include establishing an instant response plan that outlines the steps to take if the worst should happen. This would contain procedures to follow during a security incident, including identifying the roles and responsibilities, communication protocols, and specific actions to take to contain and eradicate that threat. For operational corrective controls, a disaster recovery plan can be triggered to get a business back up and running when things like fire, flood or security incidents occur. And for physical corrective controls, things like fire suppression systems like sprinklers or gas based suppression systems can be used to put out fires. Now let's talk about compensating controls. Compensating controls are alternative measures used to achieve the same security objective but when the other controls are not sufficient or feasible. So let me give you an example of this. First, technical compensating controls. Imagine you have a business critical application but it only runs on a vulnerable legacy operating system that can no longer be protected with updates or endpoint protection software. To compensate this, companies can use network segmentation to isolate these devices from the rest of the network, thereby reducing the risk of those vulnerabilities being exploited. Now, I often see this in the manufacturing industry where updating these systems is either really, really expensive or just straight up impossible. Now, an example of managerial corrective controls could be a dual authentication policy. This is where more than one approval is required for a task due to the high potential risk. This could be for things like financial transactions, access to sensitive data or configuration changes on important systems. From an operational standpoint, a compensating control could be hiring temporary staff to handle high workloads when extra help is needed. This could be extra security staff for a large event or IT staff for a big project. And a physical compensating control could be a backup power generator that kicks in if power outage occurs, keeping the business up and running. Directive controls are like guidelines, instructions and policies to ensure that the best practices are followed. A technical example of this is a data protection policy that includes specific technical standards and configurations for how data should be stored, encrypted or handled. Managerial detective controls could be things like adherence to a particular compliance policy. An example of an operational directive control is user access requests. This is like a formal process where employees must submit requests to gain access to specific systems or sensitive data. These requests then must be approved by a manager or the system owner before the access is granted. For physical directive controls, a good example is a sign that indicates a restricted area or instructions for emergency exits. This video is part of our Security Plus in 31 Days course. If you like this video, you are gonna love the full course. Not only does it cover each exam topic in simple and easy to understand videos, but it also provides hands-on labs. 
These labs guide you through practical tasks like creating trojans, cracking passwords, and sending your own phishing emails, giving you real-world experience and making your studies that much more engaging and effective. It doesn't stop there though. You also get a copy of our Security Plus in 31 Days ebook, which follows the course and covers each topic. You'll also get access to helpful downloads to support your learning, a private community where you can connect with fellow learners, and exclusive discounts. It really is the complete package to guide you through your Security Plus journey. Check it out in the description below. So there we have it, our four control categories and our six control types. It's important to understand the difference between the control categories and the control types. You also need to be able to identify which specific control belongs to each. So on that note, let's test your knowledge with a couple of quiz questions. A recent security breach in your company was caused by an employee clicking on a phishing email. Which preventative controls could help prevent such incidents from happening in the future? A. Encrypting sensitive data. B. Conducting security awareness training for all employees. C. Installing locks on server room doors. Or D. Implementing dual authorization policies for financial transactions. And the correct answer is B. By training users on security awareness, they are far more likely to spot those phishing emails and not click on them. Now let's look at an exam question from our friends over at Boson using the Exim Max practice exams. You want to install CCTV cameras that can record nighttime activity around the company's facility. The cameras must be able to record activity in low light conditions. Which of the following access control categories best describes the type of access control you want to implement. Select the best answer. Is it A, corrective, B, recovery, C, detective, or D, preventive? And I'll click the show answer button, which would then show the answer and explanation here. You can pause and read the explanation here. Again, that question was from Boson Exim Max, which I highly recommend. You can find the link below in the description. Oh, and Surpro's premium students who have the full course get a nice discount as well. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe. The support from you guys really helps this channel grow. Other than that, thank you for watching.